Back in 1995, I had the opportunity to travel abroad for the first time, and I went to the Czech Republic, and I think that was a uh, story that I told you a, a little bit ago in the Renaissance. But the, it, at the end of that trip, we finished in Austria. We were able to travel to Salzburg, uh, the birthplace of Mozart, and then later we ended the trip in the capital of Austria, Vienna. Vienna was a very interesting city. I can remember uh, how it was kind of divided into the new metropolitan area and then the old world Vienna. If you were able to take a helicopter ride over the old world part, then you would be able to see that at the very center of that section of the town, you have this mammoth uh, cathedral called the St. Stephen's Cathedral. And then that serves as the hub of the wheel. There's all these very quaint cobblestone streets that lead out from the heart of the town or the heart of Vienna, the cathedral. And so the cathedral was the center, not just for religion, but for society, for politics, for economics. And so it's very important to realize that Franz Joseph Haydn is going to be educated through the St. Stephen's Cathedral School, and also he's going to be growing up there as a member of their boy choir. So he's going to be able to learn the Viennese taste. Again, Vienna is going to become the center place for music. Italy is uh, the, certainly the power for the Baroque period, but now it's all about Vienna, especially by the time Mozart moves there later in his life. Franz Joseph Haydn was born in 1732, and he passed away in 1809. Being brought up in Vienna, he was able to learn all about the society, all about the taste, all about the mannerisms of how to conduct yourself. And that's going to be very important later on. Beethoven so wanted to study with his idol, and his idol was Mozart. But by the time Beethoven is able to arrive in Vienna, Mozart has unfortunately passed away. So Haydn is going to become Beethoven's teacher. So in a way, you can think of Haydn as the link in the chain between, between these two wonderful great composers, Mozart and Beethoven. Haydn is the last great composer of note to be under the patronage system. In 1761, Haydn was hired by Prince Esterhazy. The Esterhazys were a very rich, powerful, Hungarian noble family, and their passion was fine art. The prince's parents loved um, oil paintings and sculptures, and there were several different museums or rooms dedicated in their palace to the pursuit and the commissioning of these types of works of art. But the prince's love was music. And so together with Haydn, they toured all over Europe, auditioning and finding the best instrumentalists and the best singers. So the Esterhazys and their guests must have enjoyed some of the best performances for nearly a 30-year period of time. And Haydn was asked to be the music director. So he was in charge of all of these instrumentalists, all these singers, and he was in charge of making sure that there were operas and symphonies and concerts going on each and every week. So the Esterhazys were really blessed with the fine art that they were able to um, have amongst them during this particular time. The prince passed away in 1790, and so Haydn saw that the writing was on the wall. He was going to have to uh, move on because no one else loved music quite as much as the prince did. So for nearly a 30-year period of time, Haydn enjoyed probably the best patron position that could have ever existed. And unfortunately, because of a recession, this is basically the time when the patronage system is starting to crumble as well following the 1790s. Mozart was born in 1756, and he passed away in 1791. Haydn was with the Esterhazys, between 1761 and 1790. Mozart begins composing when he's five years of age. So that's the same year that Haydn moves to the Esterhazys. And then Mozart passes away just a year after uh, Haydn leaves the Esterhazy family. So the majority of 
Hyden's professional career uh, being into the patronage system is basically Mozart's composing career. And then we get to three years, three subsequent years in the history of music that totally impact the change of what's to come. So 1790, the prince passes away. Haydn returns to Vienna. In 1791, the next year of December, Mozart passes away. And then 1792, Beethoven arrives in Vienna to begin his professional career. Again, with Mozart dead and buried, Haydn becomes his mentor and Haydn becomes his teacher. So 1790, 1791, and 1792 are so crucial to the overall ideas of the history of music. After Haydn returned to Vienna, after following the prince's passing, he did continue to compose and he made a couple of profitable trips to London. Between the two trips to London, he composed a series of symphonies. Today they are dubbed the London Symphonies, and these are considered to be Haydn's finest efforts within the field of the symphony. Again, Haydn known as Papa Haydn, the father of the symphony and the father of the Sonata Cycle. He put together a very, very impressive catalog he leaves with us 108 symphonies, 68 string quartets, 47 piano sonatas, 26 operas, four oratorios, including uh, the creation and the seasons, two oratorios that the Atlanta Symphony Orchestra and Chorus do perform with a great deal of regularity still today, and then countless other chamber instrumental works. I want to take this time to define to you what a chamber instrumental work would be. Think of a room within your, uh, maybe your grandparents or an aunt and uncle's house where they might have a parlor or a formal living room. And then maybe think of doubling that size. Back in Haydn and Mozart's time, a lot of concerts were given for very few for an aristocratic gathering. And so you must think about what type of instrumental ensemble would fill that room or a chamber room. So a string quartet, uh, maybe two violins and a cello, just a, a string trio, or maybe the piano. We now have the piano in the classic period uh, along with a couple of string instruments or maybe uh, a couple of strings and a couple of woodwinds, just a very small idea. And so the word chamber music is the umbrella term to govern that type of ensemble. Your next lecture is to watch the Mozart biography video from the A&E Network series Biography. On your study guide, please, uh, following the third period study guide on, of the classic period, please find your list of Mozart biography questions. And as you answer those questions, as you watch that video, that will serve as your notes for this particular lecture. So following uh, finishing the biography on Mozart, I'm going to talk about Mozart's final opera, The Magic Flute. So please pay attention to the segment in the biography video that discusses the magic flute because that will be our next lecture. Hope you have a great day. Thank you.